Joining me here in Singapore, Jonathan Chang, Seoul Bureau Chief for The Wall Street Journal, and Francesca Chambers, White House Correspondent for The Daily Mail. Uh, I want to talk first about what the expectations are and what the definition both sides may look to for denuclearization. Uh, heading in, Jonathan, what do you think? Well, look, um, this has been the top topic for the past couple of months. And what's striking here is that we still don't have a completely uh, sort of one-to-one -one understanding of what exactly is meant by denuclearization. North Korea talks about the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, Donald Trump has talked about, and the U.S. position for a long time has been CVID, complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization. And we could talk for days, if you want, about the various differences between the two of them, but suffice it to say that there are gaps still. And it's unclear whether or not they've been bridged in the meantime, because we have had a lot of shuttle diplomacy take place in the last couple of weeks. Um, hopefully, they're, they're, they're closer to, to getting them together, but we just don't know, and we may not know until Tuesday. Here is uh, Senator Graham and Gordon Chang uh, this morning on all of this. It's amazing. Uh, it's a direct result of the maximum pressure campaign. The only reason North Korea is sitting down at the table with Trump is that they believe for the first time that they've got somebody in the White House they don't know how to deal with. And Trump is goal is to eliminate their nuclear missile program, not contain it. And I think he's got North Korea and China's attention. Certainly Kim wants the photographs of him shaking hands with President Trump because that's legitimization. <laughs> and even more important, that means he solidifies his rule at home because we're going to see those pictures of Trump and Kim for decades in North Korea. So, you know, President Trump gives up a lot of leverage as soon as he shakes hands with Kim. To Gordon's point there at the end, at the beginning of this summit, Kim gets one of the big things he wants, which right. is this picture. Right. And speaking to what Lindsey Graham also said uh, later on, it didn't show here, all that's at stake, right, is peace or war. He thinks those are the two options potentially coming out of this if President Trump doesn't eventually get a deal with North Korea to denuclearize. And you said we could talk for days about the definition of that. That's what we hope to do is talk for days about that. Now we had Secretary of State Mike Pompeo refusing to tell reporters at the White House last week whether or not uh, how cl closer they had gotten on that. He said that they had on the definition, but we don't know how much closer. And I have experts telling me that North Korea doesn't just consider denuclearization of the peninsula, just the landmass, that they could expect that to extend all the way to our military presence in Guam. And that's a question as to whether President Donald Trump and the U.S. is prepared to offer that. I want to read something from Richard Haas. Um, and he, after the G7 uh, back and forth and what ended up happening there, the unraveling of the G7 summit works in North Korea's favor, he writes, as President Trump will not want to bust up two summits in a row row, lest people conclude he is the problem. Increases incentive for Kim to up his asks and limit his compromises, and for Trump to do the opposite. Hardly the ideal context. Jonathan, couldn't somebody look at that and say, couldn't it be the exact opposite, that he's willing to just get up from the table and say this isn't going to work and walk away? Well, look, I think there's a case to be made that Kim can win either way. I mean, obviously, if he gets everything that he wants, if he makes a big ask and gets it, that's, that's obviously good for him. But you're right that there is a possibility that even if things don't go well, he can say, look, I acted in good faith. I handed over your three detainees. I blew up this nuclear test site. Um, I've, I've, I've been an honest broker here. And if the U.S. isn't going to play with me, then that's their fault. Uh, I'm going to keep my nuclear weapons. You have to admit that the, the hostages coming back, mm -hmm. North Korea at this table, mm -hmm. the paradigm has shifted. I mean, something changed from mm -hmm. all the six-party talks efforts right. before to get to this And point. President Donald Trump says that would be him. It's because he's here now and the North Koreans understand that he's not playing around. And it could go the opposite way. If he feels that they're not serious, he said, within the first minute of sitting down, he'll get up and walk away. So, Brett, that's actually an opportunity, potentially, for the president to show his strength here and to show not just to Kim Jong-un, but also to Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, that when the U.S. is pushed, that he will push back. And that's something we heard Larry Kudlow, the economic advisor to the president, say this morning, too, that they feel that Trudeau is trying to embarrass President Trump on the eve of this historic summit and that they're not going to let that happen. Last thing, we just heard from Greg Palcott in Seoul. Obviously, Seoul is watching all of this very closely. At one point, they wanted to be at the table, uh, but that first meeting is just translators and the two leaders. Um, what is Seoul looking at and how concerned are they about what comes out of this? Well, they're concerned, but they're also very hopeful. Keep in mind that the 
president of South Korea, Moon Jae-in, he has invested a great deal in this whole process. Some would argue that he's been the one keeping things on track, even when it looked like things were going to go off the rails in one direction or the other. And so I think he understands inherently that with Donald Trump, with Kim Jong-un, you have a volatile mix here. To be honest, we don't know what's going to come out of Tuesday. I think people in Seoul are definitely crossing their fingers, though. Well, we appreciate the early morning. Go have some breakfast. Thank you for being here.